just as I thought I was done with the Bermuda Triangle for good, I found myself on another venture there in search of the legendary Fountain of Youth. But I didn't know this at the time. You see, a good friend of mine met with an old village chief from Puerto Rico. And after enjoying the island's finest fun juice, the chief got a little bit too friendly and revealed his deepest secret, a legendary map. So my friend and captain convinced some local idiots, including me, to blindly follow him on this adventure. This is 100 Days Fountain of Youth Survival and I am Crew Ross. After rolling around graceless and not being able to sleep, I felt a bit seasick and decided to go up to the ship's deck. Guys, are we there yet? And I noticed one of the captain's mutts was out of his cave. What the hell are you doing, down boy? Unable to lure it back, I was forced to engage to fend for my life and ended up murdering the scurvy little creature. Oh boy, captain's not gonna like Fearing this. Fearing I would be tossed overboard for mutiny, I went to get ahead of the situation, but the captain wasn't Should here. I be looking at this? The fountain of... What? What's going on? Since the captain seemed to have vanished and left idiots to steer the ship, we collided with a reef. And not surprised as all adventures start, I got knocked out and once I woke up, the ship was on fire. So I quickly grabbed another page of the map and had just enough time to grab two supplies before leaping out the window. Look out below! But the impact in the storm was too severe and the crew were fighting for their life as the Santiago sank to the bottom of the sea. But somehow I survived and washed up ashore. Quick reminder, if you find yourself enjoying this, leave a like on subscribing and turning the bell on for future videos. Dying from the heat, I quickly grabbed some coconuts and seashells and then found a piece of rope on the beach before grabbing some more leaves and coconuts. This place is hot as balls! I wanted to start working on some survival tools, so I went out to farm up some small sticks and spotted a pile of rocks nearby. After grabbing them, was able to make my very first stone axe, as well as a stone cutter, and with this I was able to harvest more trees. Constructed my very first campfire, and after building it, made myself a fire starter as well, so I could start the fire, and then decided to craft some spears so I could go catch myself some crabs. Now that I had dinner sorted, I was able to cook up the crabs, and after filling my tummy, I sipped on some more juicy coconuts and decided to construct my first primitive bed. Yes, it was just a pile of leaves on the ground, but I had just officially survived my first day being shipwrecked. The next morning, I went out to get some more crabs, and yes, the good kind. Got him! Oh, still miss the crab. <laughs> Where are you going? Wait, I want to talk to you about life insurance. I continued scavenging the beach for any valued resources or supplies, and then found a crate with some bread inside. Knowing I would have to work off some carbs, I went into the jungle where I fought my very first snake and ran into a hog. Mr. Piggy, what the hell is your problem? Knowing how good bacon would taste on my bread, I decided to continue fighting, and after immense fights, I was able to take this bad boy down. Did you guys see that? So I harvested some fresh hides and meat and knew I was gonna need some storage, so I started making my way back to my little pile of leaves. Started the fire to cook up some of my hog meat, and once I had them perfectly medium rare, I enjoyed my scrumptious dinner before cooking up all the remaining crabs that I got and then called it a night. The next day I decided to allocate to just going out and farming up a bunch of random resources to start filling up my storage bin and this was an amazing day. All was going fine, well up until this point. Ah, this is so peaceful. Oh, sweet Moses, get off, get off, get off! After the encounter, I was done with the jungle for now and wanted to start constructing my storage bin, but I needed more sticks, so I had to go back. And just as my luck would have it, I got attacked again. You're freaking kidding me! I hate this. Get off, get off, get off me. You stupid. I fought off another snake and continued harvesting all the small sticks that I could find. And after making my way back to base, I started working on mapping charcoal. But my fire got extinguished as it started to rain. So I took shelter underneath the cliffside and then looked up how to make a water collector. And then waited out the storm. And after it didn't pass, I decided to go to bed. But this ended up causing me to get sick. No, I hate the flu. Runny nose and all, I made my way up to the biggest tree I could find, and after climbing it, I was able to map out this section of the island. While I was up here, I also decided to loot the nest for some eggs and feathers, and then use the map to track down hibiscus so I could cure my sickness. First, I had to kill off a snake and then manage to pick the flowers, when I faced another long-tailed mutt just like the captain had. Delivered him the same fate, and then after grabbing the body, I spotted some vines next to me that would come in handy for making some rope. So as I ran to make my way back to base, I constructed my rope and then wanted to start working on the little canopy roof. The heat was getting to me, so I made some clothing before starting my fire to be able to cook up my medicine and then finally I was able to heal up. 
Next up, I was starting to work on the water collector and I pretty much had all the resources ready. Aside from a few missing sticks and leaves, so I decided to get some rest and go searching the next morning. Tracking down said missing leaves and then went out to look for the missing sticks. And after grabbing them, I also grabbed a massive stone and made my way back to finish up the water collector. But it turns out I needed a hammer. So first I wanted to make myself a better bed, but ended up not having enough long sticks. So I slept in my old bed and the next day started working on the workbench. As this would be where I could craft the hammer to finish up the water collector. Are you serious? Could you not wait a day, Rain? Ugh. Luckily I now had everything in place to make the workbench and then had to construct a saw so I went out to collect some big branches as this was needed to make the hammer. No, 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 I'm gonna be too late! No. I never met anyone so sad to see sunshine, but at least now I had my water collector and since my cuts started to get a bit severe, I started working on some bandages and applied them before enjoying some eggs and resting up. Turns out the liquid chickens gave me indigestion, but luckily I had the flowers needed to make the cure and wanted to go search for some more long sticks and after spotting another long tree, I went to kill a snake and then made my way up to loot the nest before mapping another section of the island that enabled me to see the long sticks I was searching for as well as some nearby interesting sites where I found some reading material, obsidian and snake poison that would definitely come in handy because these things are everywhere. After grabbing some berries to quench my thirst, I went to the second nearby interesting site, carefully proceeded as I heard some more snakes and then found a recipe as well as another page to the map that spoke about a mountain trail and their missing friend. After murdering my snake friend, I found some bananas and then wanted to set up a bed and after spotting some lights off in the distance, I knew I needed to sleep here. Maybe, just maybe, that was a survivor. So the next morning, I harvested up all my bananas. No! No! After the rude interruption, I enjoyed my bananas when I noticed my spear was broken, but I was determined to go see what the light source was. I rushed past all the long-tailed dogs through some thorny bushes and then stumbled upon another dead person that was holding some more books. Oh, buddy, did that rock fell on you? Oh, man, I'm sorry, that had to hurt. The rain finally started to clear, but I noticed I was being chased by some form of animal and I didn't want to look back. It sounded like a wolf, so I rushed up a hill, made it up another tree, and then mapped another section of the island. And finally saw I was close to the long stick, so after handling the threat that was standing in my way, I was able to harvest it up and then started making my way back. Oh no, he's chasing me again! I was forced to put up a fight with my hatchet. As I started hacking away at the wolf, he was doing some serious damage and managed to take me down. Oh no, are you kidding me? I was playing on normal difficulty, so I at least had a few lives, but on a game like this with so many threats around every corner, I was definitely gonna need it. I was able to finally find my loot and then started making my way back when I came under attack by a scorpion again, but I knew I needed to kill this one as I was severely poisoned by the snake bite and this was used for the antidote. With scorpions in hand and making it past the little dogs, I got bitten by not one but two more snakes as I rushed to make my way back to my base. <gasps> I made it, I survived! Finally, I now had the sticks to be able to finish my nicer bed and then after resting up, I decided to get some reading done. Since the storm wasn't passing, this was my best way of killing some time. Rain, can you just stop? I wanted to start working on a carpentry workbench when I finally saw the clouds started to clear, so I rushed out to harvest up some resources, but saw my poison was getting even more severe. I decided to drink my snake potion in the hope that it would keep me alive, constructed my workbench and started making my cures and was able to get it down to a second degree. The next day, relit my fire after finding more leaves. I needed two more cures, but luckily now it was no longer as severe. And since I only had two scorpions, this had to do for now. So after chopping down some trees, I wanted to start to upgrade my working bench, but I needed some more pieces of rope. The upgrade was essential as it would allow me to make fishing rods. Unfortunately, another hog was standing in my way of the rope, so we engaged in a fierce battle. Mr. Piggy, you're going down. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, wait, wait, maybe I'm gonna die. No, that was my last spear. Left without a spear, I quickly ran onto a rock when I started crafting it, and after I was done, the piggy was nowhere in sight. Ooh -wee. Where are you, Mr. Piggy? And did I ever find some mold as well as some more reading material? And after grabbing the books, I now had a clear run to the vines at sea. I started harvesting it up when I noticed I was being attacked by another scorpion and down to a slither of health, I thought it was the end of me. But on just 3 HP, I survived long enough to harvest the rope and then rushed back to the safety of my little camp.
finished crafting the rope and finally made the nicer bed. And the next morning the upgrades to my workbench. Oh now that's looking snazzy. I wanted to make a bow and fishing rod but I needed more long sticks and after seeing that I could craft them with logs I went to chop one down but as it turned out I needed the improved carpentry bench to make long sticks. The problem was that required a copper ingot. To seeing I was out of water I opened up my bag of provisions from the ship and this allowed me to get some bread apples and meat enough to quench my thirst and hunger and then I decided to sit out. My poison levels again got more severe, so I followed the map to the directions of a whale carcass that allowed me to see the cave, and I knew I would find scorpions inside. And after eliminating all three of the scorpions, this wasn't the only thing that was inside here. In fact, there was a note from my captain. He said after washing ashore, he made this little cave his home for a few nights, and then one morning heard some cannon fire and went to pursue it, but forgot his spyglass, and I now had the map to find it. Also left a note and living water as to how it worked. After drinking it and having my scorpions in hand, I was able to fully cure up and then the next day decided I would venture out in search for the spyglass. Grabbing some supplies as I ran along the beach, mapping continuously as I went. Finding my first fishing location and then mapped some more and then when it started to get dark, dropped down a temporary bed and rested up. Turns out it rained during the night and I got sick again, but I wouldn't let that stop me as I continued searching and spotted something shiny. An ancient artifact that spoke about how the gifted were sacrificed. I then found another native map as well as a sacrifice location. Oh, that's a lot of dead bodies. I mean, I'm gifted so I'm sacrificing myself. Ow, that hurt. I'm lost. I then also spotted some more snake potion and after grabbing it made my way back ashore. Continuing my stroll, passing another tall tree, spotting a temple and after killing a snake, finding another pot of living water. I decided to drink it to get up to full health and eliminated another snake. Then had to look around for some puzzle pieces to add to the wall. I found a second piece and also added it, continued searching around for more pieces, finding a third one, then killing a bird and harvesting its nest. It started to get dark and I found another piece as this was the second last one. I wanted to construct a temporary bed but my disease got even worse. I didn't want to go search for leaves in the darkness so I grabbed some sticks made a fire and after cooking dinner the next morning I finally tracked down the final piece and then added it to the wall. I now wanted to start searching for the spyglass but I first decided to make a bed so I could sleep off a bit of the flu. Then crafted some rope so I could scale up the tree to map out the region and hopefully find a clue as to where the spyglass was and after reading a clue I knew it was located near some fireflies. It started to pour with rain so I went to rest up and the next morning decided I was gonna climb the mountain to test out the spyglass. Oh still Mr. Mata, you made me miss! I'm so sick of you guys! Yeah. After finally taking care of the annoying rodent, I went searching for a path to get up to the mountain, continuously searching the entire day for a way up, and by that evening I finally spotted one, but I decided to rest up first and make my way up the next morning as I started navigating to the thin narrow paths in the mountains. Oh, I hear you, Mr. Snake. Taking care of all the snakes in my way, and once they were all dead, I had a refreshing sip of water before resting up. After waking up the next morning, I had another refreshing sip from the well. Oh, wait, did I just dry this place up? Until Continued on my adventure when I spotted a strange white sign on the edge of the mountain and I knew this was probably where I should use the spyglass. I also spotted another artifact and saw another drawing on the wall but first had to eliminate a scorpion standing in my way. Alright, let's see what this bad boy can do. Anything out there, anything interesting, I don't see anything. Oh wait. What the hell is that smoke? That smoke is someone there! I decided to make my way through the nearby cave as this seemed like a quicker way down and remembered about the notes about the missing friend in the mountain. And it turns out I found him but he was no longer alive. At least he gave me his torch. Able to light my way as I navigated carefully down the mountain. I don't have a spear but I'm gonna light your ass on fire. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. I found another artifact and then also a path that seemed to lead down to the temple where I had set up my bed. So finally I could make my way back and get some good night's rest. Hold still Mr. Chicken sir. Yeah. I also killed some more birds to leave their nest to grab some more eggs as well as meat and then cooked up some lunch. And also drank my buffalo potion from the mountains to heal myself up and then started searching around for a place to stay. Oh look at your puppy piggy, come here. Oh wait, 
What the hell? How did you survive that? I pretty much chased around the little baby piggy the entire day, and after losing sight of him at night, I found another recipe and came under attack by another bird. I swear it. Uh, ow, that doesn't count. I wasn't concentrating. Embarrassed from having the bird get away from me, I went for a nice relaxing midnight swim before heading to the beach to slaughter some more chickens. Gotta be a hit. Boom. The next morning, going into the jungle to grab some more vines so I could make a bunch of rope and started working on my camp. But the problem with making a bunch of rope in the middle of the rain in the middle of the jungle is these little guys might end up creeping up on you. No, no, no. Not another scorpion. I <laughs> Get off! You happy? You dead now. Making my way back to the beach, I started dropping off all my leaves and then went out to harvest some trees. This area was rich in short sticks, long sticks and all sorts of animals, so it seemed like the perfect place to start setting up a canopy roof. But with my axe broken, I went out and searched for some stone and only found massive ones and at this time I didn't know you could use them to make smaller stones. The sun started to set, so I had to abandon my search to start building my temporary bed, since I was completely exhausted. There we go, oh, it's a beautiful Good night, good night everyone. Just hoping it wouldn't rain throughout the night and then the next morning I finally found a pile of rocks and was able to grab all of them to make a replacement axe. Finished up my canopy roof and then wanted to start dropping down some more storage bins. So I went out to grab all the trees that I could possibly find, gathering up all the sticks that I would need and then making my way back to make yet another canopy roof. And once that was constructed, I finally dropped down my storage bin and finished that up as well. Once constructed, I started working on my dinner and I was practically just in time as starvation started to kick in. But at least my meat was now cooked and I could enjoy a nice dinner, drink some coconuts before calling it a night. And then the next day, I started working on my workbench. And since there was plenty of long sticks here, I could immediately constructed and then wanted to start working on the saw so I could start the carpentry bench as well as the hammer. So I went to grab the massive stone that I'd seen earlier and with this I was able to craft a new replacement saw since I forgot my old one at the previous camp. Oh, just look at this moon. And the next morning went out to grab even more big branches as they made the hammer as well as excellent firewood and after harvesting up a tree I saw there were even more nearby but I also heard something behind me. Wait is that a hog I hear? Oh you're right behind me. You're stupid. I finally learned if I I kept my distance and not missed the timing on my hits. The hogs are actually not that scary and they're quite easy to kill. So after finally taking the big boy down, I was ready to start harvesting up when I noticed I didn't have any durability left on my cutter. I took back to the mountains as I passed plenty of stone there and after finally making a cutter and harvesting up the piggy, I was in dire need of some coconuts. I was dying of thirst. After making it to the beach and grabbing some coconuts, I was able to quench my thirst and then wanted to continue constructing my base. Started by making the campfire so I could cook up all the new hog meat and then once that was done I could fill up my tummy. And also made a few bandages before heading off to bed. The next morning I noticed all my clothing had broken so they were completely useless to me now. And to make a better tea of clothing I first needed to make a skin dryer so I went out to gather some more resources. Oh you guys are so annoying. Come here you stupid mutt. Why do you have to be so many of you? Hey, I'm actually a dog person, so don't let this video tell you otherwise. After enjoying my dinner, I was able to construct the new skin dryer, and with this, I would now be able to hang up some hide. But apparently, first I needed to construct a tanner workbench, so I chopped down some more trees to construct a new crafting workbench, but see, I have a pretty short attention span, so when I went out on a little adventure, I got a bit sidetracked. I had some more mud standing in my way as I went out in search for some more long sticks, and after finally being able to take care of them, continued my search, grabbing more sticks and mapping out the surrounding area. After finding the trees and grabbing three of them, I was dying of thirst, so I had to rush back to base, and then after sleeping the next morning, I grabbed some coconuts. Finally dropped down my new carpentry workbench, constructed it, and then went out to grab some more trees so I could start making split logs and work on the tanner workbench, but I got a bit distracted again when I spotted these building toolkits, so of course I had to see what exactly they did. Turns out they unlocked building structures as well as vessels. But I still needed to make some hide, so I went out to grab some more nearby wolves and after approaching one slowly I was nervous to engage. I had actually completely forgotten I already had hide from all the hogs, so after slaying the jackal I continued searching the surrounding area, had to murder another little puppy and then once he was dealt with I continued searching around. I can hear them growling, they're looking for me. 
Ooh, living water. Even though I wasn't scared at all and completely calm, I could at least now drink two living waters and get my health completely full. The jackals finally lost my scent and then I found another watering pit. I heard some nearby snakes, but this place also had a bunch of clay, so of course I had to drink some water to grab resources and then made my way back to camp. Man, can I just say I freaking hate jackals. It was now time to focus back on the task at hand as I started to construct my very first dock. But I was again out of stone and didn't have a sufficient axe, so I went out and searched, slaying some more puppies standing in my way and then finally finding a pile of rocks. Grabbing all that I could and then making my way back, having sufficient to now finally be able to construct it. Hiding underneath my roof from the rain and then constructing a new axe, chopping down some more trees and finally when the rain stopped I was able to make the last required building kits and thus be able to finish the dock. After sleeping off my exhaustion, the dock was finally done. Oh, just look at this thing, it's beautiful. I knew sailing away from this island, I first need to make sure I had uncovered all the secrets that lied here. So after being bitten by a snake, I climbed up a tree and mapped out another section, feeling another artifact not too far from my location. So after grabbing some rope, I was able to track it down, revealing some more mysteries about the island. I made my way back to base so I could catch up on some reading, and after reading a book, I decided the next morning to make myself a bunch more bandages. I need remembered about the tan and workbench for better clothing and then proceeded to drop it down and started to construct it but I was missing some more big branches. My poison was still also not wearing off so I decided to take back to the mountains in search for some more scorpions and also checked out the large man-made structures. After finally seeing the location of where the big branches were and with darkness upon me I decided to set up a temporary bed but first had to take care of a snake in the area before getting some good nights rested. Throughout the night my poison and had gotten worse but I was at least able to track down the big branches and then decided to make my way back to the mountains to finally track down a bunch of scorpions. Nervously climbing up the ancient structures and then peeking around the corner finally finding some and after taking care of both of them and grabbing them I ran to make my way back only to be met by even more opposition from some furry dogs but I was seriously worrying that I was about to pass out. To make matters worse as I was crouching underneath a rock a snake leap out and bit me. Luckily I was able to take it down and find the mountain path leading down only to get hit by another bird. It's everything how to get me to death. But I had survived and made it back to base. I quickly drank a cure for my cold and then went to sleep. With my poison no longer as severe I finished up the tanner workbench and then started processing some hide to hang them up on the skin dryer. With dried hide I could make clothes as well as a sail for my first ship. I wanted to completely rip the poison so I went out and searched for some more white green leaves but got distracted by another shiny object. Eating to a bunch of bone arrows as well as another artifact and then as it started to rain I knew I had to quickly fill up my tummy on the water while I was here before rushing back to base. Oh man it's really coming hard down tonight. It seemed like monsoon season was still upon me so the next morning I decided no more canopy roofs I was gonna construct a little shelter. So I started building myself a bunch of foundations to make myself a nice place where I could feel at home. Going out to search for more rocks so I could continue the building. Facing some more downpours but I wouldn't let that discourage me as I was finally able to finish the floor and wanted to start working on a staircase but the dock was a little bit in my way so I decided to move it. Once done I was able to construct the staircase and then started working on some doorways as well as some window panels. I managed to get three panels done but I was completely exhausted so first I had to get a nap in before continuing work the next morning. Chopping down some more trees, bringing them back to make some more builder toolkits so I could start working on the walls and then started placing them down on the foundation and lining them to make a nice complete Box. I really wanted to have a somewhat decent sized living area so I started building the walls and then once all three of them were done I went to take a quick brief nap before going out to chop down more trees as this was pretty exhausting work. By sunset I had more building tools and the walls were officially done so I started working on the ceiling placing down the blueprint and making the first two pieces before going out the next morning to grab even more trees. I was determined to get the base done today but my saw was about to break at least I now had a few more pieces of building tool kits and I was able to get four pieces of the roof done. I also now had my first piece of hide and then placed down the next one before going in search of some rope as well as another hog as I really wanted to continue the hide production. Ooh, rope and hog, I hit the jackpot. But man, this little piggy seriously had some determination and will to live, but it wasn't bigger than mine and after taking him down, got ready to harvest some meat as well as hide. No, 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 not again. You stop.
stupid. Oh, hey, and do you guys notice all the slapping sound effects I added every time I got bitten by an insect? Well, if you guys guessed correctly, the first three comments will get a $100 merch voucher each. So after cooking up my dinner, barely saving me from starvation, I was able to demolish my bed. So I finally had the roof somewhat done. I was able to place it inside the new shelter and then went to bed. Finally, a proper roof over my head. I slept some more the next morning as I didn't get a good night's rest in and then grabbed some more hide before heading out to grab some more coconuts to quench my thirst. I also ate some leftovers from the night before and then went out to farm up some more long sticks. It started to rain again, but I was here in a place where there was at least three trees. So after grabbing all of them, I knew the water pit would also be full of water. So I made my way over to drink up and then got bitten by a snake that immediately gave me stage two poisoning. After grabbing a drink, I luckily remembered I still had a cure back at base so I healed up and then the next morning chopped down even more trees. Yes, I was causing some deforestation, but I needed a ton more builder toolkits. With these, I could finish my final window and the last piece of the ceiling and then started dropping down some little handrails so I wouldn't fall off my deck and of course I needed some shade upon my balcony. Still not in a position to make new clothes, I decided to repair my old leafy ones and then also made my very first bow. Also made a leaf bandolier to carry my arrows and then constructed some more rope as well as some more builder toolkit. And then with this I was able to start working on the handrails as well as the little balcony roof. And then after being completely exhausted from the work I went to call it a night. The next morning construction on my little working platform started. I also wanted to get to work on making a whole bunch of arrows so I slaughtered some birds so I could harvest their nests. And then went out on an expedition to search for all the stone that I could possibly find. Essential for making all the arrows. I then made my way back to base, constructed a new axe, and noticed I had a severe tummy ache from all the raw eggs. Why did I eat so many? So I hoped I was able to sleep it off, and then the next morning I hung up my harpy trophies, as well as my little hogs, used my newly found stone to finish up all the foundations, and then once done I was ready to start dropping down all the handrail, demolished one of my walls to turn it into a doorway, and then placed down a new carpentry workbench, as I had to demolish the old one. I also placed down a chemistry station, chopped down some trees, and through exhaustion I continued working, finished up all the remaining pieces of hand railing and then once done I tested out my new door before finishing up constructing it, grabbing another tree just as the sun was starting to set. And then the next morning I was finally able to finish up the final piece of hand railing. The place was finally done and I could finish up all my working crafting stations. So I finished up the chemistry workstation where I could make even more medicines and then went out to grab another half log so I could start constructing a pottery workbench and made some more final split logs before calling it a day and then the next morning went out to grab some more birds. Now you stupid bird! I had used up all my stone in the construction of the base so I needed to go out to grab some more. I was ambushed by another jackal and since I didn't have a spear on me I was forced to engage with a bow on short distance but luckily prevailed and tracked down some more piles of stone. Contemplating for my bad aim I was able to craft 27 pieces of arrow and then went out to grab some more water. Returned to base to repair my stone saw and then once done I started a new fire so I could cook up my jackal meat. Enjoyed some scrumptious medium rare steaks and then just before heading off to bed I made some more split locks so I could finish the pottery workstation to make pots for a new water collector. No rain you're early. Turns out I first had to cook these pots so I also had to drop down a kiln. As it turned out all it required was another split log and a piece of clay which were resources that I all had together. So after grabbing them I finished building up the kiln but it ended up taking so long I was now about to pass out from exhaustion and I couldn't finish the clay pot so it would have to wait. The next time I placed down my newly found jackal rug and then finally I was able to start the fire and start cooking up my pots. With provisions now in full working progress I was ready to start working on my very first vessel and decided to opt for the canoe. Turns out it wasn't that expensive, I just needed to grab a few pieces of bark, add it to the canoe and then went out to grab some more logs to make the final pieces of split logs. I was so excited to get it done and start sailing, so I worked through absolute exhaustion but finally I had the last missing ingredients and was ready to add them to the boat. But first I got in some rest and then the next morning grabbed my clay pot so I could drop down the water collector and all that was missing now were a few more pieces of big branches. So after grabbing them I had a quick look and spotted some more nearby bananas so of course I had to grab even more provisions. All that was left now was water but I was so excited to get it done but I was now completely dehydrated and I ended up passing out. Luckily in the safety of my home. After another good night's rest I was ready to start sailing and man oh man was I excited for this. Let's go baby! 
man, I can feel the wind in my head. This is amazing. My first sail trip was across the side of the island, just looking onto something that would have taken me days to travel on foot. As I went back to my very first base, since I still left a few supplies there, and I thought maybe all the processed meat had not yet spoiled. And to my surprise, as I came rushing into my little base after a quick little dip, it was all still there. My normal meat had spoiled, but there were still 10 pieces left. So I went back to the boat. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> Ow. Okay, I need to learn how to do that. So I loaded up all the supplies, making two to three trips, and then finally after seeing I had no more water, I scavenged for some coconuts, had a quick look at the map, and then decided to go out sailing for the Santiago. Turns out I had actually passed it on my way there, and after positioning myself above the boat as well as a bunch of jellyfish, I dove into the water. Is that a shot? Turns out it wasn't as I rushed to get back to the canoe, I got bitten from the side, but I wouldn't let that stop me. As I searched around the boat for any possible supplies, that I had missed. And then after getting another shark attack, I hopped aboard. Wow, well, he bites hard. I nearly died, actually. With that out the way, I decided to sail over to the Lonely Rock, where I had previously seen the white smoke. I cautiously made my approach and made my way inside, only to find another dead crew member, some more reading material, and a note. The note said they were actually from one of the other ships. So I went up and found another native map and made my way to the very top. Botted something off in the distance, but I came under attack. Oh, <laughs> those are some reflexes. They put up quite a bit of a fight, but finally I took down the second and third one. And I could only imagine the poor little guy came up here to grab some tasty eggs when he came under attack by the vicious eagles. Or vultures, they might be vultures. Oh man, buddy, I'm sorry. You're, you're only gonna need this, right? Don't worry, I got the birds for you. You can rest in peace now. So I made my way back into the cave, making my way back to my boat and then started sailing back home. And as I made my approach to the dock, the sun started to set, so I got in a good night's rest and then the next day continued my hide production. I figured out to make my clothes I needed to get a needle, which meant I needed fish bones for the needle, so I went out to stab them with a harpoon. This better work, I'm not in the mood. Oh, of course it doesn't, this is stupid! So with fishing as my only option, I killed some birds to grab the worms from their nest, made a fishing rod and the next morning went out to get some good fishing done. Here goes nothing fishes! Oh, I got one! And another! Turns out only one of my fish were big enough to give me a piece of fish bone and then I went out to grab more worms so I could grab even more. I was able to catch two more little fishes and then after I had them I made my way back to base and the next morning I saw it started to rain so I wanted to start to work on some flasks. The water collector had a capacity of 40 units but only 30 got filled up in the time that it rained and as I gave it some more time I decided to go grab some more worms and eggs so I could do a little bit more fishing once the rain cleared up and then also made my way over to the water pit to fill up my last two remaining flasks. I then discovered a tree with a bunch of oranges so of course I had to pick them for even more provisions. There were a total of three trees here and also the rain started to clear up. Once done harvesting I went out to search for stone to make a cutter to harvest my fish but got ambushed by another jackal and since I was encumbered I couldn't move but luckily I landed the final shot and took it down. Was able to make my cutter and harvest up the fish and now I would be able to construct my very first needles. Guess who's getting some new clothing soon. To show off the mighty warrior that I am I hung up some more trophies and placed down some more jackal rugs, prepared a few random clay items and then dropped them inside the boat as well. I wanted to be as prepared as possible for the new location. The next morning I finally made my needles and then with this I was able to make a cape and also noticed my leather backpack was about to break. So I made myself some hide pants as well as an animal hide bag just in case it did I didn't want to be left encumbered in the open wild. With all the worms that I had gotten I could do a ton more fishing and collected a total of four pieces of fish. I was getting pretty good at this so I collected a bunch bunch of needles and after harvesting up all the bodies I went out and looked for another hog as I needed some more animal tendons to make the string as pretty much all the sets of clothing needed this. I missed the biggest Thursday back until I reload. That's not very nice of you. After landing another shot in his butt he ended up bleeding out. And after harvesting just as I called it the backpack broke but luckily I had the other bag on me and I was able to grab all the stuff and made my way back. But I could only craft one more thread then drop down my new hog rug as well as my new trophy. And my place was coming together nicely. The next day I knew it was my final day of preparation. So I started loading up the boat before making myself a nice English breakfast, made myself some more flask and cooked all the hog meat and then went out to fill up the remaining flask. And by the time I got back to my base the sun was already starting to set. So I went in to get a good night's rest. I knew I needed to be at full capacity when I went sailing. The day of traveling was finally here. After grabbing a few final bandages, 
I was ready. I didn't quite know what to expect in the new region, but I was excited for the new adventure that would lie ahead. As I made my approach, I spotted what seemed to be a shipwreck on the side, and I could only hope and pray that one of the other ships didn't fall victim to the same storm. We were three ships that sailed out, and this was a Santa Maria, but there were no signs of survivors. Excuse me, kind sir, you know where the captain is? You're not gonna need this book, are you? You're dead. I tracked down the captain's door, but it was locked, and as I made my way down to the bottom gate, I needed an iron rod to wedge it open. After finding it, I was able to make my way down and then spotted nothing aside from another cannon. But since all the doors were locked, this gave an interesting idea, so I went to grab another barrel from the cannon and then went searching for some gunpowder and a cannonball. Was able to find some in the crew quarters, and now it was time to light up the cannon. Oh, here goes nothing! Fire in the hole! Oh, it actually worked! As I blew my way through to the first mate's cabins, I ended up finding the key to the captain's quarters and rushed my way upstairs. Mr. Captain Sir Tommy, uh, no, you guys are dead too. But they didn't die from natural causes. It seemed like these guys were murdered, and they left a diary on their last adventure about how they survived on an island and eventually met the captain from my ship. So after grabbing all the supplies that I could find, I was ready to start sailing to one of the nearby islands. I had three to pick one and ended up going for the one on the left hand side. It had a promising temple and I thought this would be a great place to start setting up a little shelter. Find some rocks, ooh. Ooh, there's a light there. But all I found was another map and piece of copper and decided I would search the next morning. I still had no idea what dangers this new region would bring. The buffalo, sir, can we be friends? No, okay. I found some more pieces of rope and then started constructing a little foundation so I could place down a bed as well as some carpentry stations. So I went out to gather up a bunch of short sticks as well as grab myself some coconuts and continue chopping down some more trees to get all the final resources to finish the carpentry workbench. And I knew it was essential for me to get some shade over my head as this was a pretty hot region. So finally I finished up the foundation and then went to bed. And the next day I struck luck when I found a piece of bamboo. Oh my gosh, I need it, Dad! You see, this just unlocked the water distiller, something I could use to turn salt water into drinking water. I only had a few days of water supply, so I knew I needed to get a move on. After positioning it down and placing a kiln, I started placing myself some supports to start working on a little overhead roof. But the problem was I needed long sticks, and since I didn't bring any, I had to go out to explore. But I was quickly losing daylight. Oh, what the hell is- What the hell is chasing me? What is this thing? Come here, you stupid lizard! After encountering the new region's enemy, the Devil Lizard, I was able to take the Tigu down, and then I spotted what seemed like a train leading down. I squared off with a pretty strong snake, as it required two hits, but finally took it down and then collected a recipe. Passed some bamboo on my way back, and being somewhat poisoned, I knew I was quickly gonna lose water. So I went to rest up, but was unable to sleep off the poisoning. So I drank some coconut water and collected some more branches, so I could get some mapping charcoal done, but I ended up standing in the sun and I now had severe overheating. I was going through my flask a lot quicker than what I was hoping for and it was essential for me to find long stick. Mr. Buffalo, tell me you know where they are. But he decided to keep it to himself. I did I ever spot some pineapples, but for now I went to farm up some of the local trees nearby to get some more water and then continued to go out to grab some more bamboo. Nearly now I had everything for the water distiller and the next day was forced to finish up all my fruit. And I knew if I didn't find long stick soon and finish it up, I would be in serious trouble. Bending time to do more mapping led to complete dehydration and I was forced to drink some water, take a quick nap and drink some more and I was down to my final flask. The last one! I knew I didn't have a lot of time left. If I didn't want to end up like this dead guy or this dead lizard that seemed to be broken, I needed to track it down. I then found another book as well as some more anthills after doing some mapping and decided to go search over there. Hello anteaters, do you know where the long sticks are? Please tell me. Are you sure it's this way? Uh now, I didn't speak anteater, but I was so dehydrated that I thought that I did. It turned out this little guy led me straight into a trap with another demon lizard. But after slaying him, it turned out he was telling the truth. And I found two trees and collected a total of seven long sticks. Okay, so I wanted to take a shortcut, but I'm pretty sure I hear a jaguar. In no position or state to fight, I was forced to take the long way back, forcing me to finish my water supply. But at least now I had a roof over my head and could hopefully start fighting off the sunburn. I also used some of the sticks to make another storage bin so I could at least start sorting out my supplies. But that's when the fatal dehydration kicked in. As I went to search for some coconuts, I remembered about the pineapple. So I made my way over there and I was just in time to grab one. Down to just one HP, I was able to eat it, getting a little bit of water and then went to farm up some more. I had a quick look at my map and noticed there were more nearby. But you know what happens to the gambler? If you get a little bit too greedy, 
you need to know when to leave the table. After being bitten by the snake, I was forced to go back and slay it up to collect my supplies and then made my way back to do some organization back at base. It was a complete mess, at least passing out that reset my stats and I was able to get a kiln done and have a quick night's rest before working on some more half logs the next morning to get my pottery bench done. Exhausted from all the work, I couldn't lay off the bed or now. If I got any more diseases that would drain my water, I would be passing out non-stop until eventually fatal death. I woke up from a nightmare and decided to sleep some more to get well rested out and then sat out to upgrade the pottery bench so I could make clay pots and was forced to demolish my distiller to get the last stick needed for the upgrade. I then ignited the kiln and started cooking up some clay pots and while they were cooking I decided to head out to go search the other side of the island for some more long sticks. So I started sailing around the corner and felt like a complete idiot. There were a bunch of trees right next to me. So I went to harvest up all three of them and returned with pockets full of long sticks. A foolish mistake, so of course before heading back I wanted to head out to the beach to see exactly what was there as this was another section of the island I had yet to explore. Stop, mister. And man was I happy I did this as I collected a total of 8 coconuts. I wanted to make a rope to climb the tree and do some mapping but I kept getting attacked. You stupid oversized pigeon just give me a second. Okay, now you die. After killing him I rushed up the tree and realized I forgot my charcoal. Alright stupid, come with me. I'm gonna eat all your babies in front of you for attacking me. But it turns out karma worked a lot quicker than what I thought. As another demon lizard came leaping out of nowhere and managed to land a few hits before I took it down. Yeah, you see now that was karma. I went to sleep on the boat and then the next morning sailed back to my little base and now I had all the sticks needed to finish up the roof support. I then aligned my water distiller and then went to drop down another clay pot and after finishing the roof and the skin dryer and then placed down another clay pot, quickly cook up all the eggs that I had gotten and then the clay pot was ready and I could finish up the water distiller. I then collected some salt water and dropped it off in the distiller and went out to grab a bunch of big branches for firewood. I could only carry a few but it was enough to start the fire and as I went out to grab some more there were some more demon lizards waiting for me and these things were a true annoyance. I landed another shot and it finally bled out and then went to make some bandages but I ended up doing it in the sun and I was overheating again and clearly the sun had gone to me as I felt brave enough to take on a buffalo. <laughs> In the butt. Why are you running? <gasps> I took it down. This was a much needed victory and I got a ton of meat as I made my way back to cook it up the next morning. I truly felt proud of slaying the buffalo as I enjoyed my victorious steaks. But it was now high time to go explore the rest of the island as I grabbed some final trees, made some split logs so I could make a tanner workbench to process all the height that I had gotten and once they would be drying out I could go out exploring. I fold up on water had a quick rest and then went out to go look for some termites. First day back you stupid lizard. <laughs> I also learned that lizards could apparently fly as it leaped out of the air I landed the final shot and then went to grab the termites. As you see this was used for a cure for overheating but I got distracted by a shiny object in the mountains. Seriously a book? No sunscreen? Ugh. While killing some more snakes my bow ended up breaking and I was forced to throw them with some hatchets but luckily I had two on me and this revealed another living water bottle. As well as the path that led to the shiny object, another artifact and then made my way back home to drink up some water and craft a cure for my indigestion. But while cooking some steaks I got dehydrated again. Are you freaking serious? And as my water was still boiling I could only take a brief 2 hour nap otherwise it would kill me and at least now I had a little bit of water enough to start working on a chem bench so I could work on the cure for the overheating but my supplies were looking thin and lo and behold I needed some more big sticks so I went out and searched for them when I spotted another tall tree. Climbed up to do some more mapping and it revealed the same two trees that was being guarded by a jaguar and since I didn't have my bow on me I quickly went back to grab it. This was the last place that I had yet to look. Mr. Buffalo, I'm going to slay a jaguar. Wish me luck, okay? Not sure if I was brave or stupid, I got ready to fight the fierce kitty cat. As I saw it run off in the distance, I gave chase. I wanted to use the height to my advantage, so I hopped on the cliff. Oh, Mr. Kitty Cat, where are you? Mr. Kitty Cat, where are you? Mr. Kit, oh, I hear, I hear. No, 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 he's right there. Oh, oh, Get away from me! With a slither of help I got away but I now had the jaguar exactly where I wanted him and I could start pouncing him from a safe distance with my arrows and finally started sending him running but I wasn't gonna let him get away. I was hot in pursuit but then I saw him turn back and run straight towards me. Breathe, breathe. Oh. <laughs> 
I did it! Victorious in my fight, I collected my rewards and drank some living water since my health was pretty low. Uh, oh, this is not a scope! Wait, 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 off me! I hate spiders! If only I could burn it, but an arrow had to do for now. Mr. Buffalo, anyone ever told you about the legendary Jaguar Slayer? The next morning, I started loading up my ship. I had pretty much conquered the island, aside from the little beach where I forgot my mapping charcoal. But I was again dehydrated, so I was forced to chop down a tree just to get in one coconut. But it gave me just enough water to be able to climb out the tree and start mapping the final section of the island, revealing another tree fruit nearby. And this would give me just enough to sail to the next island. You stupid lizard, you think I'm scared of you? I'm the Jaguar Slayer, damn it! After slaying the oversized lizard, I was able to grab the fruits, giving me just enough water to continue my sailing. What is that? I nervously made my way inside the temple, making my way up the stairs, revealing a giant lamp. Luckily, I had my torch and lamp oil on me and I was able to light the signal fire. Please, someone come save me! Knowing if anyone was in the area, they would spot the smoke from afar. So I went over to the nearby island and it turned out to be Copper Island. After collecting a whole bunch of coconuts on the small island before it, and as the sun was setting, I was sailing my way around the island. The island that they had apparently set up their camp. I at least knew I was hot on their tails. At some stage or another, the Santa Maria crew as well as my captain was here. The problem is, they're not the only ones here. No! There's spiders here as well! Oh, did I tell you guys spiders really give me the heebie-jeebies? But I was getting pretty good at my bow. Even unexpected enemies fell victim to it. Still Mr. Lizard! I went to put him out of his misery and found some more artifacts as well as another rock on the wall. Then scavenged the beach for any more coconuts that I could find before setting up a temporary bed and then the next morning continuing my adventure. Climbing up another tree, doing some more mapping, grabbing some more fruits and finding some more nearby trees. Oh boy, I found the third ship. Inside, I also found a book, and as I dove into the water to go search the other half, made it to the below deck where I found another mystery item, a set of tools, and then made my way out to a nearby cave where I slayed some more snakes as well as some scorpions to grab some more living water and another artifact, and decided that the cave would make a good enough shelter to spend the night. By the next day, I had searched the entire bottom section of the island and it was time to head up. I grabbed some more sticks and fought some more demon lizards and this time I wasn't gonna let them hold me back as I wanted to go searching for the camp of survivors. It didn't take me long to spot the gazebo off in the distance, slay the snake in front of the gates and then find out that there weren't any survivors. Three shipwrecks and still no sign of life. All that was left here was a diary as to what had happened. As it turned out, the Santa Maria couldn't navigate the rocky paths, and after facing some damage, they decided to take refuge on this island, where they set up a temporary camp. And after a few days, were joined by my friend and captain. They were excited to have him here and told him about the copper that they had found in the mines nearby. It seemed like a promising solution to fix their ship, so the two heroes set out. There was also a detailed map describing the mine's location, and when I climbed to the top, I also found some notes about where they were sailing to next. Bob, you're not gonna mind me bunking here next to you, hey? I decided to make a temporary bed and drop down a storage bin as I was gonna use this camp to spend the next few days. I made my way back to grab some more supplies from the boat and ended up breaking my bow and was forced to run away from another lizard. This guy was more hungry than I thought. How are you still chasing me with your stupid short legs? Leave me alone! Oh, I made it. You stupid, stupid lizard! At least now I could cure my tummy ache and then started sailing around as I wanted to dock closer to where the staircase was to the camp. Docking on the beach and then grabbing some more long sticks nearby, I was faced with another bunch of demon lizards. These things were pretty much everywhere. What is two of you? I was actually missing the long-tailed dogs. They were a lot less of a nuisance to deal with. But luckily, I was able to take both of them down and successfully make my way back to the camp. With no water, I was forced to drop down a canopy and hope I could get it quickly finished up the next day so I at least had some shade so I wouldn't deal with all the overheating. Oh, I see a fruit tree and a lizard. Forced to fight off yet another lizard and after taking care of it, I threw my spear at another nearby snake and then went to grab the fruits only to get chased upon by another lizard. Landing the perfect 
bite to knock me out. After waking up, I ran back to the lizard so I could extract my revenge and also grab all my loot. After grabbing my bag, I also harvested all their meat and then went to cook up all the lizards. In rush to the beach just before sunset to grab the last remaining leaves that I needed to finish up the canopy roof. And finally, it was done and I could sleep with a roof over my head. Oh no, this is much better. The next day, seeing there were some pineapples and dragon fruit nearby, so I went to go grab them even though they would be camped out by a lizard or two and it ended up after jumping over a cliff there were actually three here but where did the third one come from come here you stupid <laughs> uh, right now there's a bird on me too come on come on <laughs> yeah. it was definitely getting crazier than normal from all the heat but at least i got some pineapples Ooh, what do you have here is these your shoes I then grabbed all the fruits that I could to buy me a few days of this and then spotted another shiny object at a temple. Ooh, bring it on, Mr. No, no, give us spear back! There we go, thank you! Okay, come on, now let me stab you with it. <laughs> Boom! Definitely going a little bit on the crazy side, but at least I made it up to the top of the temple, found another buffalo potion as well as an artifact, and as I peeked around the corner, it turned out there was a jaguar waiting for me, and after locking eyes, I ran as fast as I could to cook up all the lizards that I had just slain and then went to bed. On day 69, I woke up even more dehydrated, and I knew my only food source was sitting behind the jaguar. Oh, it's still where, where are you going? But I wouldn't let him get away from me. See, day 69 is a special day, so I chose to celebrate it by killing as many animals today as I possibly could. And I started with this jaguar, except he got the upper hand. Oh, that sucks, Bob. I just got killed by a jaguar. As I rushed back to get my stuff, the jaguar was waiting for me before I even got to it. And I was forced to retreat up a little hill to engage from there, but missed my footing and landed right on his doorstep. But I wasn't going to let him defeat me again. Now, can I stand there? I finally made it back to my bag, grabbed all my stuff and then harvested up the little fruits before seeing the first copper mine and realizing I was at the wrong one. I also spotted a little treasure on the cliff near to me so I went to investigate but missed my footing and fell down. Oh, this is the end of oh, I survived. <laughs> And I was nearly just like you. And he had with him a note speaking about the fountain of youth. And I knew maybe the captain wasn't crazy. Maybe he was actually onto something. I had survived so many days here so far. And I wasn't going to let any demonic lizard or jaguar stand in my way. As I fought through two more lizards. Taking both of them down and then continuing my search. Hearing another kitty cat in the area. I was forced to fight another jaguar. I was becoming a true warrior. I ain't afraid of you. Come back here. You're not running from me. Oh, oh, okay. You still got five left in you, not anymore. But there were still more lizards in the area also, and I wasn't in a position to fight, but I couldn't end such an amazing day on a low note, so I knew I had to be victorious. Taking another bite, I was down to a slither, landed an amazing death blowing shot, and then tracked down another diary of the captain. Turns out while they were mining, they got attacked by a ferocious beast, and I wasn't the only jaguar slayer. With the captain's life rescued, they now had the copper to start repairing the ship and then sail off, and I I now had the notes as to where they went. So after getting some good rest, there was time for the final stretch. I started working on everything that I would need to melt the copper ingot. So I spent my time collecting clay, harvesting up all the trees that I could find and doing a lot of passing out because the conditions here were truly brutal. After some perseverance, I was finally able to finish up all the structures and I was ready to start smelting. I also wanted to follow in my hero's footsteps by making my own cart and as I went to search for material, I found another artifact and after having all the sticks that was needed I was able to get the cart done allowing me to carry a lot more material so I started by going out to farm up even more clay after numerous travel repairs I was completely dehydrated completely exhausted but stacked with clay passed out some more was at least able to start producing charcoal the necessary fuel source for the smelter I then grabbed my cart again made myself a pick and went out to farm up a bunch of copper exhausted again from farming the entire day I had all the copper that I needed so I started up my smelter I needed to survive just a few more days, so I went out in search for some more living water and after tracking some down, I was able to at least heal up. I finally had some copper ingots ready, but I decided I would continue producing copper, taking brief naps in between to speed up the process, making some more charcoal, passing out some more. And even through all the passing out, I was a well-oiled machine. I made sure to get plenty of spare copper and then climbed up to repair the compass so I could start navigating, but first I needed to make some ink. 
requiring me to find some eggs. The problem was I had pretty much farmed up all the nest on the island, so as I continued to search around and finally finding a bird, I knew she had to have some eggs in her nest. After grabbing them, I had to construct myself a chemistry workbench before being able to make the ink and pen. And once I had it made, I decided to spend the rest of the day grabbing some more fruits that I could, and then finally I was ready to start navigating. As I sat up the compass and started aligning the stars, I knew exactly where I was and I could now start drawing the map, coordinating and figuring out exactly where they have gone and where they were sailing to. My next goal now was to head to the Windy Islands. So I loaded up my cart and I made my way back to my canoe to load up all the resources that I had farmed in. After dropping it off, I rested up and the next morning I dove into the water to grab myself some coral as well as look for seaweed. I stopped by a small island to grab some coconuts but after mapping it made me completely dehydrated. Luckily I tracked them down just in time to carve them over and drink some coconut water but I still passed out from exhaustion. At least now I had the energy to track down the final seaweeds that I needed, another part of the artifact quest, and then decided I would sail back home, the best place where I could probably refuel, re-kit and resupply to take on the final days ahead. Oh it's good to be home. I had been gone so long that all the coconut trees had respawned, so the next day I started placing down all my trophies and this place was really looking amazing. So drop down all the books that I'd collected. Oh man, that is a lot of reading to do. And I knew reading them over the next few days as I continued doing all the necessary bits and pieces, I would get a lot smarter, a lot better and a lot more skilled to take on the final challenge. I wanted to set up a forge so I could make some copper pots so I could start working on some leather clothing. Oh my gosh, it's raining. I missed it. Singing in the rain and chopping down some more trees, I was working on all the resources to finishing up the forge and did some reading in between. It was even raining the next day, so I just ran around in the rain grabbing some more leaves to make myself a ton of bandages before setting out on the venture and then finally I had the forge done. Did some more reading and then made myself another pit to make some more charcoal and then went out to collect myself some meat, hunting down some more hogs. And I was surprised at how much I actually missed these giant lobs of bacon. After grabbing myself my meat, I went home to cook it. Fed my rumbly tummy, went to bed and did some more reading the next morning. And spent the entire day working on some more hide, dropping down some more dried hide and did some more reading before the next day venturing off to the mountains. Even though it was about to be dark and I went up without a torch, I wasn't scared anymore. The old me never would have done this. After grabbing some fruits, I was able to finally track down the last missing piece of clay, barely escaping my life and making my way back home. Finishing up the charcoal pile, getting some rest, reading some more books and finally I could make my very first copper tank. Since I didn't have enough long sticks and they were back in the desert, I decided I was going to do this with the clothing that I had as I hunted down the final hog. This time the shot and got knocked out, I at least rushed back to be able to finish the job. Now I had all the meat and rations that I needed for my final travel. With the start of another rainstorm, I knew my water collector would be stocked to the brim, so I went to make a bunch of coconut flags and then collected all the water that was inside, loaded up my boats and I was ready to set sail. As I spent the entire day traveling and by the next morning I had arrived and made my way over to the windy island. And this place rightfully had its name as when I arrived it was pretty windy. I had to be quite strategic about where I placed down a bed and also place down a storage bin for all the supplies that I would find and then rest it up and then the next morning I wanted to make myself a fire pit since I got a bit of a runny nose. And we all know how a flu goes in the desert. The problem was it was so windy here that I spent so many hours to try and get the fire started. But to no luck I went out to search for another location, found a bag of provisions, a repairing kit, some more books and then stumbled upon a small camp. There was also a bed here and then after searching around some more, finding more living water and drinking it, I rested it up and the next morning went to explore the wind turbines and after navigating through the mountains that's when I spotted it Diego's body and to confirm my suspicion Diego also didn't die from natural causes the killer had struck again where Diego didn't stand a chance and I knew I had to solve this mystery okay, who the hell are killing all these people am I even safe here but I summoned up some courage and made my way into the tunnels right more dead people and continued exploring well, hello, sir. Mighty nice spear you have here. You wouldn't mind if I... Oh, sorry. 
Is there? I cautiously navigated through the maze-like tunnels, finding some ladders and then climbing up. And by the next day, I had found a strange room with the living tree symbol. And apparently some jackals were guarding the entrance and I was now forced to engage. Fighting two of them at the same time, I had to be careful. As soon as I went off the one, the other attacked. But finally, I was able to take both of them down and then found another note next to another corpse. The note was talking about what was behind the door, the living tree, but it was also surrounded by poison as gas so I decided to first rush back craft myself a new torch as I definitely wanted to see what was going on and then the next morning faced off another jackal I was close to another treasure location and after grabbing a jaguar potion I made my way back to the wind tunnels carefully making sure I didn't miss anything I found the secret room with another buffalo potion and drank it while I could heal up I didn't know what challenges I would face inside but I just had this feeling I was gonna fight a boss so after resting up I found the next tunnel Tunnel, revealing off to the side and there was a big arena. Okay, so I get the lava, but seriously a jackal. Luckily by now I had plenty of practice with these guys. As I leaped forward and struck my first shot. I was full health and I knew as long as I was patient and perfectly timed my shots, I would prevail. I got a hit in by the Jaguar, but luckily I gave the final death blow. Taking it down and then revealing a native map as well as the key. Felt there was more to this room. As I leaped over some lava and made it over to the other side, I found some more lamp oil and then disappointingly jumped into the lava, getting some third degree burns, but the only cure was some food and rest. Well, here goes nothing. The massive door started to open up and I made my way inside, finding even more dead people and then spotting the tree of life. Seeing how many have died trying to make it over, I carefully did some parkour to make it over all the poisonous water, finally reaching the tree, but all there was here was some living water as well as another artifact. Clearly, I was too late. After two days of sailing, I finally made it to the next location. Location I found using my friend and captain's map, but I couldn't help but shake the feeling that maybe he was sitting behind this. But see, a hundred days wasn't enough for this adventure. There is still so much of the story to be told as I continue my search, solving some puzzles and overcoming all the dangers ahead in search of the Fountain of Youth. Though as the game still continues to develop, if you guys want me to find the Fountain of Youth, let me know down in the comments section that you enjoyed this so I could do a part 2. Thanks so much for all my Patreons and members and thank you so much for watching. And here are some more videos that you might enjoy watching as well. I hope to see you guys again here soon.